Hello there, my fellow dungeon crawlers. Welcome to another Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup with Iken. And this is going to be part 7 of our Gargoyle Monk video series. And with some luck or some bad luck, it's going to be the last episode, depending on if I die or not. Last episode, we grabbed up the rune in the abyss and did some fancy, unique juggling and survived all this. So far, we're pretty successful with this run, even if we had some problems along the way. And the next stop on our journey here is going to be the Realm of Sod, where I'm going to be delving into the first few levels and hoping for some gold dragon armor. And depending on how things work out, we will also either finish the game or decide to go somewhere else to gear up. We're gonna see how everything works out in this run so far. We've been pretty successful. I'm a bit scared about uh, the liches which will come down there in Zod. And I'm pretty scared of my mutations here and I'm still not gonna go into a mutation potion here because I want to wait until something really nasty shows up and so far those mutations weren't too nasty enough for trying out a mutation potion. Okay so there we are in Zod 1 there's the first pack of draconians but nothing too dangerous among them. And Selandrian is doing some confusion work here, and this looks pretty decently from the looks of it. There's a first Quicksilver Dragon, the first for Zot, that is. And we got rid of that pretty easily, too. And chances are we are able to complete the game here, but I gotta be really careful because. Last time I went into Zot 5 on the last run, I died a few steps away from the orb, and somehow I don't want to repeat that in this game. Somehow I want to win. Okay, so there's a Draconian Monk, alongside with a few other more harmless Draconians, and there's an, an Annihilator. These guys also have Crystal Spear. It's one of the reasons why I want to get rid of him pretty quickly, as quick as I can, actually. And Selandrian again does a lot of stuff here. And okay, we're facing here a curse too, which is a really obnoxious baddie down here in Zot. And I think I don't want to fight as long as the curse toe is around, so we're retreating for now stepping behind this corner and see what will happen. So the cursed toe must be around because of all those summons suddenly showed up, but they're not too dangerous. And I think I'm gonna step out here and kill those draconians outside while the cursed toe is not able to torment us. I mean, being a gargoyle means I'm pretty resistant against their tormenting effects. Yet still, I feel a bit worried about this. I really want to take this carefully. Okay, so now it's alone. We're gonna switch over to the Holy Wrath weapon because I think this should. Yeah, they're vulnerable to holy damage. And there we go. So far, stuff is working pretty decently until the first orb of fire shows up. So we got hit for a lot of damage from this first fireball and there was another bolt of fire and we're gonna send Selandrian in front of it and hopefully... no, this is not gonna work out as intended. So we're gonna push in some healing potion and some might potion and Let's see how this works out now. And here we go. 
so we got a bit more malmutated but again nothing too worrying showed up the decrease in spell power doesn't uh, magical po uh, points doesn't hurt me too much there's a cloak but I don't want to switch out on the magical resistance cloak here so I'm gonna let this thing be and here we s could here we saw how much damage a orb of fire can do at this point of the game when you're sitting at only one point of uh, fire resistance that's why I definitely wanted more fire resistance and yeah I still hope that a golden dragon will show up and lend me a few of his, his scales after I killed it because the gold dragon scales will also push, uh, push up my fire resistance which is exactly what I need right now we're only wearing a cold resistance plate armor which is not too useful in this scenario but apart from the orbs of fire we seem to be able to deal pretty well down here okay so there's a mock drop no problem at all and that's Zot 1 for us and there goes Zot 2 and I've asked for some golden dragons and here they are but actually I didn't ask for so many of them at once so we're gonna duck out <laughs> this is a very very scary room all matter of things that are shooting at us and is there any other staircase let's try this one out feel really uncomfortable with this situation there okay so let's check okay luckily we got another chance in a less dangerous room the gold dragon got frenzied but was already almost dead so that wasn't too dangerous and again he didn't he didn't want to give us his scales but sooner or later one should drop or not because it's a very loot unlucky run who knows we're gonna see but if stuff keeps being like that I think I need to go somewhere else to pump up my fire resistance a bit but Luckily, finally, we found this gold dragon scale armor we wanted. So there's one annoying electric golem hanging around. Alongside with a kill clown. I think I'm gonna focus the clown first and then go for the golem. I'm gonna try to stand not beside a wall where it can double zap me. It's really important. And yeah. My Demon Trident here is not the ideal weapon of choice against the Electric Golems because they're resistant to electricity, obviously. And here we go. That's our Gold Dragon Armor. That's two points of fire resistance and we're gonna see how this will work out when the next Orb of Fire shows up. We have some more um, Ancient Armor Scrolls which we're gonna use now. We're at 63 armor class now, which is really good for the late game. It's enough to finish the game, and let's proceed and check out what will happen. Okay, so there's a, another bunch of draconians. I'm going to let Salandrian do the tanking part for now. Okay gonna idealize him and let's check there's Tiamat Ooh. okay so we're gonna retreat for now this is way too much pressure to take it on like this Tiamat is one of the most dangerous unique draconians you can meet and should always take him with due respect Ugh. This is getting ugly. So we're at 35 HP now. That's why I wanted to duck out on this situation. So we're taking this fight really slowly now. But I think we should be able to kill this guy without going for a healing potion or something like that. Okay, so we're gonna go down again and go up again. Okay, so this is really 
some staircase I don't want to take again. So I'm going to try out the uh, dangerous room again and hopefully survive. Okay. So right now I think this room is better to take until this happened. <laughs> Shit. Okay. So we're totally surrounded right now. We're gonna try to take down the Moth of Wrath first. But we're gonna step behind this corner here and go for a potion of haste. This is definitely one of those situations where you wanna have some sort of buff going on. And everything goes frenzy here, so we're gonna dig through this wall and hopefully we will be able to reach the staircase. Yes, we are. And still surrounded by two berserked draconians. Let's see how this will work out. Always having a careful eye on our HP here. But it looks like I should be able to kill these two guys. So the main problem with this situation here was the uh, draconian shifter, I think. He teleported me around and remove me from the staircase immediately. So we're here stuck between a rock and a hard place, kind of. On, on this staircase we're facing Tiamat, on the other staircase we're totally surrounded by an army of really dangerous uh, stuff. So I'll rather prefer to take the fight with uh, Tiamat at this po point. So I think I'm gonna go for the uh, potion of agility at this point and we're killing the other draconians first let's idealize Salandrian. and this is not going well we're taking a lot of damage here and i don't like this situation at all so we're gonna go for a scroll of fear which hopefully will do something Go for another potion of heal boots and kill off these guys. And now it's only Tiamat and us. And Tiamat got confused, which is really good. But I don't want to fight this anymore. Let's retreat, fight another day here. And let's check if we can regenerate back up. Yes, we can. Okay. So there goes another bunch of Draconians, and somehow I feel like I should probably take a trip elsewhere first, because somehow I run into a lot of situations where I almost die. I'm actually nervous here, sweating and fearing for, for my life. <laughs> okay, so let's check if we can take down Tiamat. I think I should sacrifice one of my haste potions on this. Yeah, let's do this. I want to be fast in this one. And let's idealize Salandrian too. Because this will improve his hexing chances a lot. Which works out pretty decently. And now that this thing is alone, yeah, everything went pretty decently. Lucky us. Okay, so... There's the dragon skin cloak, which will uh, switch over to different elemental resistances, but I don't want to rely on that. I want to stay with my magic resistance because I feel like magic resistance is very, very important right now. So there's still a big bunch of Protonians downstairs, which still hurt me a lot every time I face them. Okay, so I think for the time being, I'm gonna uh, switch over to resistance from corrosion and drop one pip of magic resistance here because there's a lot of acid sources and I don't want to get corroded too much because corrosion is really something I don't want to see. I want to have my defenses as high as possible. Okay, so there's another draconian here and actually if I stayed on that corner where I first met Tiamat, I think I would have been dead by now. 
and we're still sitting at a humble one humble potion of heal wounds which is really not much so there goes a draconian annihilator and let's tell salandrian to focus this guy so will we because i want to don't want to get crystal spirit too much so i'm gonna kill him first the other guys are definitely doing less damage than the annihilator potentially so we're here with a bunch of storm dragons which killed Salandrian unluckily but he did a lot of work until he died so there we are another bunch of baddies beaten down there's a gold dragon okay another death cop these guys are just extremely quick and they slow you it's pretty much the whole deal about them let's let Salandrian do the tanking here which he does pretty well and go forward so I'm still a bit scared about this room down there I mean I took down a few of those baddies inside there yet still that's a lot of people sitting down there I hope I'll drag them out of this room by exploring the rest of the floor and reduce the pressure on this room a bit. But we will see if this works out as intended. Okay. So I'm avoiding auto exploration here for obvious reasons. There is another draconian shifter and an annihilator which got confused stepping forward to finish him off as quick as possible and switching over to the shifter afterwards and the rest is just plain killing okay so the draconians in Zod are a very good source for good cloaks but normally you should wear some good cloak at this point of the game And there's another tentacle monstrosity and we're slowly working forward to this level we're at some good skill levels here fighting is going to be finished pretty soon which is a bit sad because i feel like i could really use a lot more hp but that won't happen not in this room that's that is so we're at this room again but i think this is a very good corner to fight this so I'm gonna shout to see if anything gets close. And there's the Moth of Wrath. That's why I didn't want to uh, take this room up front because on my last visit here, the Moth of Wrath really buffed up a lot. And being surrounded by frenzied uh, draconians and dragons is no matter how well equipped you are, a pretty certain death sentence in my humble opinion. So at this corner point we're gonna idealize Salandrian and let him do the tanking. Hide behind him and let the pole arm do the talking. So there's another shifter. Okay. So judging from the looks of it, only uh, Tiamat and this scary Moth of Wrath situation were problematic but apart from that it looks like we're uh, clearing through Zot here pretty decently and again I'm pretty happy that uh, I'm already done with Tiamat because that's one of the uniques you will only face down here and it's pretty cool if you're knowing that you're no longer afraid of this guy showing up so that's pretty okay so that's sub three now and the storm dragon got berserked and confused so i think we should be okay here and i was right so 
that's uh, three. I still have three maps of magic mapping, so I'm gonna use the first one to have a look at level layout to see possible vaults from afar instead of blundering into them. And there's a Rendar at Battleaxe, but I'm not gonna pick it up or identify it because I'm not. I'll not switch over to two-handed weapons now. One-handed weapons are way to go for me. So there are a few moths here. Nothing too dangerous. And looks like Zod 2 was way more dangerous than Zod 3. A bit more perma food we actually don't need because we're still running around with the amulet of the Gorman. But if we have a look at it, there's so far no real useful amulets in this whole game, which is really, really weirding me out a bit. But also weirding me out is the fact that this Cursed Ring of Teleportation, we found the first one on Zod 3, not a single one before that. That's pretty rare. Okay, so we, here we have a whole bunch of dangerous draconians. And I'm gonna go for some kill hole here because I don't feel too comfortable with these guys. And here we go. Let Solandrian do the tanking and idealize him. While doing so, we can avoid the draconians. Uh, shooting all their skills from afar on us and force them to, into close combat where we can avoid most of their skills. Because again there was a was an annihilator around and I feel a bit endangered by these guys. Also the storm crawlers are summoners which can pile up a lot of lesser dragons. Okay. But obviously everything went fine here. And speaking of everything went fine, we're finding a lot of heal wound potions and ancient armor. So that's really relieving me a bit seeing that we have five potions of heal wounds now. That's really good. So off to Zot 4 we go. And we're gonna magic map this as well because I have enough magic mapping scrolls to completely map the rest of the realm of Zod. And judging from the looks of it, we're again not facing any vaults in this level, which is also pretty good. But let's see which baddies we will face instead. So I'm gonna clear out these hallways first before I enter any big rooms to have some kiting space explored if I need to retreat. Bigger rooms can always end up in encircling situations and I don't want to take on these unprepared. So there we go. This rest of the hallway is locked tight between some traps, which I don't want to try out. Okay, so there's a death cop. Got confused, got destroyed. No problem at all. And there's a Draconian pack. Salandrian goes right into them, but little does he know that we're cowards and not interested in fighting bravely here. We're interested in fighting behind corners and stuff like that. Okay, that's working way better for me. Okay, we got this pack down. Let's proceed. Finish up this room first. And again, I'm going to focus on the hallways before I enter the next room to have some more movement options here. There we go. And let's open this door. And only one draconian in our way. That's pretty nice. Okay. Quicksilver Dragon. Let's let Salandrian do some tanking. There we go. I like to send Selenrian up, up front because I can always heal him up if he gets hurt too much or switch places with him and take the fight 
or him instead. So there goes the next big haul. We're gonna take it slowly and carefully. Moth, no piggy. Went down pretty quickly. That cop also not much of a problem. Ghost moth, these are really dangerous dangerous if you're a spellcaster because they rapidly drain down your mana resources. But for us as a melee, we're not too intimidated by that. Our spell is right in our hands. It's called a demon trident. It's the only spell we use. Okay. So looks like the worst part of Zot, apart from Zot 5, was on the first two levels. Because Zot 2 and uh, 3 and 4 are pretty easy so far, but I don't want to shout it out loud. Got another potion of haste, that's good. I really want to stack up as much haste potions as I can before we go for the orb run, because they come in really handy at this part of the game. But we need to use a few of those before. I think it was well worth to use them at that point. So there goes the last room with some ten tentacled monstrosities, but I'm not too scared of those. Okay, there we are. We got another magic mapping scroll. All right, so that's Zod 4 done, which brings us to the point where we can either enter Zod 5 or go for vaults, and there's the next orb of fire. I think. This is the perfect situation to uh, try out how good we can deal with them now with another pip of fire resistance. And Solandrian is doing his anti-magic job. We've got fireball again. And we got malmutated. Lost a few strength points, but that's not too bad and we got malmutated again with armor fitting less good so i think i'm gonna go for my first mutation potion here what happened we lost the deformed body we lost the blurred vision and we only have the uh magic power malmutation left we got agile and apart from that, everything bad went away. That was a very, very lucky potion of mutation for us. Okay, so we're going to enter Zot 5 now. Because this fight with the Orb of Fire went pretty well. And as long as we're facing only one of these, I think we should be fine. And the problem is the only spot where I can, could go now next would be uh, Vaults 5. And I think Waltz 5 is similarly dangerous to Zot 5, actually. Because you will start in a very, very bad situation down there at uh, Waltz 5. And I've lost a lot of successful characters down there. And I always like to avoid it if I can. Because, well, last level of Waltz is always a bit tricky and full of bad surprises. And if I can, I'd like to avoid it on this run. Although I think I'm perfectly fit for taking it down. But, well, let's have a look how this works out now. So the moth is down. There's one annihilator here. So we're going to step back. Put Salandrian up front where he dishes out some paralysis, some confusion. And yeah, the hexer is really useful down here in Zot because the Draconians don't feature that much magic resistance as other enemies do. And apart from that, our ancestor is fully specialized in hexes, which means his success ratios are pretty decent too. Okay, there goes another Draconian Knight. The shifter got paralyzed, so I'm charging through, taking him down ASAP. Alright, one more room to go. There are the first orb guardians. Okay, so the tender, the tension is rising here. 
And there's a player ghost. Demigod Wanderer with agony, some... Oh boy. This is a very, very uncomfortable enemy. I'm gonna retreat to the stairs first. And I'm gonna switch over to the Holy Wrath weapon here. And we're gonna take it up front because I don't wanna have Selendrian do the tanking here because he's way too weak to uh, withstand this player ghost. Player ghost got confused, and so far we've got not a single uh, point of damage in this fight. This guy keeps blinking around, which is a bit obnoxious, but obnoxious, not dangerous. There we go. I think I'm gonna adjust these to B and A. It's a bit la late for that, but well, better late than never. There we go. Off to the last rooms we go. Another Quicksilver Dragon. Got him down. And here we are, facing the grand finale of the game. Off to the Realm of Sot we go. Into the final vault. So, this area is one of the most uncomfortable in the game. It features a lot of evil traps, there's thought traps around and permanent teleportation traps which won't go down when you step into them and a lot of very very evil enemies. So potentially we will see a lot of ancient liches or orbs of fire or such an annoying alarm trap at this long, stuff like that. Or a zot trap here. So this is kind of like a situation where you don't want to go left or right. So we are facing an ancient witch here and we're not knowing yet which set of spells he's using but either way I'm gonna swap with the resist corrosion here. I really want to be uh, more magic resistant because I don't want to get confused or slowed. So he's standing in front of us, so we're gonna switch over to the Holy Wrath weapon. And there we go. I'm really happy that Manus got this nice weapon for us. And there's another orb of fire. And I don't want to take this fight at this area. Let's kite it out. Let's regain our HP, heal up Salandrian, and hopefully take down this Orb of Fire while there are not as many baddies around. I really don't want to fight an Orb of Fire where there's so much other threat around. So we can idealize and reach over. We're going to heal up Salandrian again. It looks like the Orb of Fire was killable for us, a bit relieved. Okay, so I think with Idealize and some proper positioning these guys are absolutely survivable here. So I think I'm gonna go for the uh, path with the Alarm Trap because I have some cancellation potions on me which means I can just uh, cancel out the mark debuff, which I really don't want to have. I don't want to have everything on this floor running towards me. I mean, I've killed some, but there's potentially still a lot more enemies here. A lot more of them. So obviously something else uh, took the alarm trap. And there's a permanent teleportation trap, so we're not going to take this path which is really obnoxious because this means we have to walk straight into a Zot Trap which can potentially do a lot of bad things to us. Even banishing us into the Abyss or spawning at evil monsters, just doing some damage. There's a lot of options if you step into a Zot Trap. Okay, so there's some Killer Clowns. Not too much of a hassle room. Okay, so 
Right now, I'm trying to pull out as many enemies as possible out of these areas. It looks like it's a permanent Zod trap, which means I have to take this trap on my way back as well. Ah, oh, you gotta love Zod 5. Okay, so that's again a big bunch of enemies, but it's again a lot of draconians which are pretty vulnerable to all these hexes and the stormcrawler summoned a whole bunch of guys here, so I'm gonna step back, avoid these summons a bit and kill him, kill him alone, or as alone as possible for us here. Okay, so Salandrian is a bit hurt, so I'm gonna step back, let him heal up, kill off anything that uh, obviously wanders into the uh, teleportation trap here, and yeah, I could switch over to a Holy Wrath weapon, which is pretty useless as well. I think I'm gonna... Oh no, I'm not gonna wield this broad axe because it's fragile. Mm. Okay. So let's just step back from this wall. And uh, the electric golem ain't dead yet. It blinked. Okay, now it's destroyed. Okay. Another electric golem, and judging from the looks of it, there's more than this one permanent teleportation trap. So, probably there will be a lot of stuff hanging around this floor. Okay, so I got mutated in a good manner by this orb. I didn't even know that this would be possible, but I just got extra magic resistance from this mutation. That's pretty lucky. Uh, but this frailty is not as good. So we lost another 10% of our maximum HP, which weren't too good to begin with. But that's... That's the stuff of... Th that's the kind of things that will happen when you're facing orbs of fire. So we're gonna call Salandrian, idealize him, and head into this mess. There's another malmutation. So we got the urge to shout, which is not too terrible, because we're not stealthy. We're no stealthy concept here. And yeah, let's keep pulling these enemies here which seems to be an endless slaughter at this hallway. There's an Orb Guardian. Let's wait a bit more. Okay, let's wait a bit more. It's a bit annoying, but I don't... But I want to enter this area as late as possible, because once I went through this trap, I don't want to go this way again until I have the orb. So that's why I'm trying to kill off as much stuff as possible before I enter this room. With no way back in sight for me. I mean, I, still, I, I could teleport out of this, I guess. So let's keep waiting. There's a Scorcher. Down he goes. Let's shout and wait. Shout. And wait. So there's a dragon from the other side, which is okay. Ah, oh, there goes another orb of fire. Let's idealize again and kill it off, hopefully. Okay, so we didn't eat another malmutation here. Luckily, let's shout and wait. Shout and wait more draconians coming our way. Let's kill off the Stormcaller. And there's another Annihilator. Let's kill him. And there we go. So 
So I'm going to forget this floor and re-explore it. And because chances are there were a lot of baddies which went through this uh, permanent teleport trap. So I want to try clearing out as much as possible from this floor. And there's another cursed tomb. Okay, so we're going to retreat a bit. I think I'm going to bring this electric golem upstairs, kill him there, and yeah, okay, that went well. And now we're gonna finish off this cursed tomb. I'm gonna switch over to my holy weapon here, because it'll do a lot more damage against this thing. There we go, took no damage. Very good. Okay, so let's keep exploring this uh, area. Because my plan here is to uh, kill off as many enemies as possible before I enter the finale. So there's the Ancient Lich. And I don't want to run into stuff like this Ancient Lich or this Cursed Toe when I'm already wear wielding the orb. Stuff can get pretty ugly if we're not careful around here. And I've lost the last game down here, so I'm a bit super careful now. Maybe a bit more careful than I need to be, but I don't care. We want to win this, so I should take as much time as needs. So there's another curse too. I'm going to switch over to the holy weapon and kill it off. Another Ancient Lich. I think I'm gonna idealize here. Okay, got him down. Very good. So I think this, all this uh, roaming around here was pretty good for us. So I think I'm gonna redo. Forget this floor again, roam again, hopefully kill off some more dangerous stuff. And after this, I think I'm gonna enter the final area where I died last time. <laughs> okay. But judging from the looks of it, we should have cleared out a lot of these baddies here. Okay, so let's go. Confirmed with yes. So we are engulfed in raging winds. This spawned a twister with 12,000 HP. So that's a short-lived thing. Let's recall Solandrian. He won't step over the Zot trap by himself. And let's use this corridor for now. It's also a very good way to break lines of sight. So there's a storm caller. Let's go for an idealize. I really don't want to lose Solandrian here. I feel like I'm very reliant, reliant now at this point on him. So there we go, the storm caller is down. I'm gonna focus the purple draconians next because their dispelling breath still deals a lot of damage to me. Okay, got it confused, and let's head over here. So as you can see, there's a lot of permanent traps here, and we're getting closer to the center room where the orb lies. We found another Zop trap, and every time I uh, pull up some enemies, I immediately step back to not aggro more from inside. Okay, there we go. Let's get closer carefully. Another two guardians. So we're gonna take some steps back again. Kill off these. There we go. Let's get closer again carefully. There's another one. Get back a few steps. And repeat, repeat, repeat. So let's get the monstrosity first. 
Okay. And again, carefully get closer. Say hi to the orb of thought. Okay. There we go. We got it open now, but I'm gonna finish off the last of the rest of this area. Just to be safe. So there's a few baddies. Let's get back here. Do a completely unnecessary uh, ide idealization on the Salandrian, but it's the end of the game. I'm not gonna be sitting on some piety. So let's spend it. Okay, some more orb guardians. But it looks like, yeah, we're done here. Okay. So we can grab the orb now and go for the long way home. There's an ice fiend. And I'm gonna step into this total trap. Unluckily, it didn't go for a good spot here. And there's a pandemonium lord with chain lightning. But I think I can outrun it. So let's go again. Again, no luck. I think I'm gonna pop off a normal scroll of teleportation now. Again, this is getting a bit obnoxious. Let's teleport again. Okay, so I'm giving up. I'm gonna restep through this Zop trap, as dangerous as it may be. And hope for it. Okay, engulfed in negative energy would partially resist it. Okay, so nothing too terrible happened here. There goes a Kako Demon, which is a bit spooky because they can also malmutate you. But at this point, I guess, as long as it's no really harmful malmutation, we don't need to take care about that that much. So here we are, a few demons. And let's take the run back home. Sun Demon, that's okay. Pretty harmless. Is that three? So we got three potions of haste, six potions of heal wounds, and I'm absolutely ready to use them if I need to. Okay, this staircase was very close by. And here we are at sort one, with only one staircase available. And we're gonna dig through this affair here, take a shortcut. All right, looks like we're approaching the exit to Zot pretty safely here. I'm keeping my Holy Wrath weapon permanently up because the game respawns at this point mainly demons against you, so it's probably the best weapon I can t take here. Well, it's not as efficient against the Orb Guardians, so maybe I'm gonna switch over to the Electrocution against that. So, there we are, there's a Sun Demon and a Fire Dragon, and a Red Devil, but I'm not too concerned about those. It's overall pretty harmless stuff so far. But I don't want to shout at it. <laughs> Stuff can get ugly pretty quickly. We're facing some pandemonium lord. More angels or more fiends. There's a lot of stuff which can happen now. Okay, so we're here. That's Boris level. Speaking of angels, let's go for a haste potion here because they're all much quicker than me. And I don't want to get stuck into this situation here. So that was depths three into depths four, uh, other way around. Depths three into depths two. There we go. Hitting depths one now. And let's have a look where the exit is. right beside me. Okay. And now we're gonna go for the auto walk and see 
how this will work for us. D13, D12, 11. We think ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one, and we even got right next to the exit of the dungeon. That's a pretty smooth exit here. So there's a smoke demon. Let's kill him off. Let's get Salandrian at our side. He has all good rights to leave the dungeon with me. Would have been a lot harder without him. And there we are. We're gonna. Step outside here, and you have escaped. We won this game. There we go. First win for of my video series. I'm gonna end this episode here with some overall thoughts. The whole run here was a bit challenging because until the very end we didn't find any two good equipment items. We only found this one plus six products which was even fragile, which means I couldn't swap to any other weapon if I wielded it. There were no interesting randarts. We didn't find a single unique amulet in this game. Only a few pretty useless uh, unique rings. So overall, this game had very bad loot, but I liked it because it shows very well how well-suited gargoyles are to win the game, even if you have some trouble finding good equipment. It works even if you're not getting too much good equipment. The best thing I got, I think, were those gloves with the regeneration. Apart from that, <laughs> stuff was pretty ugly. I think it's the first game I ever finished with an amulet of the Gormand around the neck. Well, I was very sated gargoyle, I'd say. So, thanks for watching, and we're gonna go for some other character on the next episode. I'm not too sure where I'm gonna go next, but one thing is sure, it won't be a Minotaur and it won't be a Gargoyle. Those two things are sure. So see you guys soon on the next episode and thanks for watching.